Hi, and welcome to the Modern Persian Food Podcast. We are food bloggers, Bita Arabian and Bita Nazim Kelly, and we're here to share with you the rich flavors and fresh ingredients of Persian cooking and how to incorporate them into today's modern lifestyles. We're excited to introduce you to the flavors, tastes, and techniques we use, and also our own cultural stories and perspectives growing up in the U.S. in a Persian family. Thank you for joining us. Hi, friends. Welcome to episode 67. Today, we're going to be covering a unique single ingredient, Persian pistachios in Farsi known as peste. We are going to help you bring vibrance, texture, and flavor to your everyday dishes with some ideas of how you can sprinkle them on your dishes and desserts. And joined with me today, as always, is my partner, lovely Bita June. Hi, Bita. Hi, Bita June. How's it going? I'm good, thanks. Good. I mean, if people can actually get their hands on the delicious, fatty, beautiful colored Persian pistachio, then like that's a win because it can kind of be hard to come by. And unfortunately, with like sanctions and stuff like that, they are kind of hard to get a hold of sometimes. But they are so delicious and so decadent that it really is a treat to have Persian pistachios. Yeah, let's get nutty for a minute. I mean, Persian pistachios, the jumbo, uh-huh. they are really something special. They often are marinated in a like a lemony citrus saffron salty mm-hmm. heaven mm-hmm. i remember as a kid just loving these things so much that i would suck on the shells yeah i do that too actually <laughs> i still do that <laughs> till like, your tongue gets numb and it's like okay time yeah. to stop but yes i mean we all know what pistachios are right so you gotta you gotta work a little bit it might help to have some fingernails and pop open the shell and get to the nut meat the Persian pistachios, we're talking about those big jumbo ones, but there are actually many varieties of them, huh? Yeah, there's a ton of different varieties of pistachios. And, you know, if you don't have someone coming from Iran bringing them to you, a lot of the Persian markets have them. And also a lot of the Persian online retailers have pistachios on their website, so you can definitely order them. And there is a big variety. There's unsalted, salted, roasted, citrus roasted, as you were talking about. So there's a bunch of different flavors, but they are so good. And, you know, for fun, you can kind of get the Persian ones and get non-Persian pistachios and kind of compare them and do a little taste test. And you can kind of see that there is really a big difference in like the texture and the meatiness and how big they are. That really kind of makes it really unique. Extra roasty. I think they're Mm -hmm. roasted a bit longer. But yeah, any type of pistachio is delicious. Like, don't get me wrong. We're really lucky if we can get some from someone that comes back. But they come from many places in Asia, in the Middle Eastern markets. They're often from Turkey and U.S grows them so I yeah mean, good old california too any kind of pistachio is going to i think elevate a dish yeah so just to differentiate so pistachios often are used as garnishes on persian food and the ones that look really vibrant and green are a specific green skinned pistachio that again if you get in a middle eastern market or order them online they are super bright green and when they're slivered or sliced Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that are very often used on rices and desserts. Yeah. A lot of times the way that we eat pistachios is just in a bowl. You know, it's it's served by itself, like in a big bowl, usually when you have guests. So they are delicious just on their own. But to your point, if you want to elevate a dish or include a little bit of more texture or a little bit of color, pistachios are great. I think my favorite dish is like a tachine that has like a jeweled topping layered in there with barberries and orange peel. And I love having pistachios and almonds in there as well, slivered. And it just really brings a lot of vibrance to the dish. Yes, tachine. And then of course, the jeweled rice Mm -hmm. and shirin polo. Yes. Which usually has some beautifully colored dried fruits and sometimes orange zest or peel and definitely some bright green pistachios to add color and flavor. You know, we have a Basteni episode, an ice cream episode, and we talk a little bit more about Persian ice cream, but a lot of times it's garnished with the beautiful slivers of bright green pistachio on top of the ice cream. And also a lot of the different types of desserts have pistachios in them. 
Yeah, Akbar Mashti, what you're talking about with the pistachios, rose water, saffron, mm -hmm. churned in and also sometimes sprinkled on top or rolled as you like to roll them on the outside of your ice cream sandwiches. Yeah, they're so pretty. Yes, and then all of our wonderful, beautiful Persian puddings. Yeah. Milk rice pudding, yachdar behesht, which translates as ice in heaven, mm -hmm. and baklavas have a variety of nuts, but oftentimes pistachios, both inside and I'm sprinkled on top. Right. So, you know, some of the puddings that you were talking about, also like the halva, there's usually some sort of like decoration on top. And a lot of times there's pistachios. Same thing with like the sholazad, which is the saffron rice pudding. A lot of times there's actually like beautiful designs made with the slivered pistachios and also slivered almonds. And a lot of times with ground cinnamon, there's either a design or sometimes they'll even have like writing with the cinnamon. So you can actually like sprinkle the cinnamon very carefully in between your fingers. You can actually draw letters or characters. Yeah, and sometimes they'll use stencils where they sprinkle in mm -hmm. cinnamon using stencil in beautiful designs. Yeah, so I think that pistachio lends really well with dessert because it's a sweeter nut too. So it just kind of goes with desserts. And you can put them on any kind of dessert and sprinkle them on your cakes on any type of ice cream or fruit. Yeah, that's delicious. And for anyone who's interested, we do have an episode on Persian nuts that we'll link back to in the show notes if you want to learn more about other types of Persian nuts. But pistachio really is a, a versatile nut that not only brings a bright pop of color, but it has a great texture and super delicious taste, a very fatty nut. So it does bring some of the extra fattiness that makes it like so unique and rich and luscious. The best place to keep a nut that has a really high fat content is to keep it in the freezer or the refrigerator so that it doesn't spoil. It's great. It's a lot of fun. You can add them. You know, I make my pomegranate glazed chicken wings and I love garnishing it with pistachios on top. It has like a really good contrast of color or another favorite way is on top of salads or roasted vegetables. You can go ahead and add kind of like that additional crunch and really elevate your everyday dishes to something a little bit more special that you can share with friends or just treat yourself to a fun little treat. Yeah, I really like the look of the green skinned slivered pistachios with rose petals. Mm -hmm. Again, just makes it fancy and pretty. And another dish that it works with is aras polo. I think that combination with the dates and raisins and cinnamon with some pistachio is lovely as well as reshte polo also is lovely with some pistachios on top. Mm -hmm, sounds delicious. Right. But, you know, you could just sprinkle it on just about anything. And if you can't get your hands on the Persian pistachios, you can save a step and get pre-shelled pistachios. You can get them almost anywhere. I mean, get them at Costco. Yeah, you can really get them anywhere these days if you're not looking for the specific Persian variety. And if you do get the plain one and you want to try to roast your own, it's actually super simple if you want to do it in the oven. You just mix lemon juice or lime juice with saffron. We grind up the saffron and put it with some hot water and it blooms to a beautiful reddish orange color. And you mix that together and you toss the pistachios in it. And then you lay it flat on a baking sheet and put it in on a low oven for like maybe like about like 10 minutes. And then afterwards, then sprinkle a bunch of salt on top and put it into the oven for a few more minutes. And you have Persian-inspired pistachios that you can make at home. So if you can't get your hands on the really special ones from Iran, definitely try your hand at elevating some standard ones and to get those flavors. I love roasting my own nuts. It smells so good and the flavor is amazing. I roast a lot of different types of nuts. I even just do it in my toaster oven. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I do it that way because I really want to keep an eye on it. So one thing you do have to be careful of is not burning them. A difference of one or two minutes could make or break them. Yeah. <laughs> I have I have charred my share of nuts, but Roasting your own nuts will make your house smell cozy and delicious. And roasted nuts are, to me, even more delicious. So mm -hmm. I love putting them in salads. I have fruited kale salad I like to make for the holidays with pomegranate and some apples and grapes and 
you know, roasted almonds and pistachios. So we hope that these ideas have inspired you. Of course, you could just snack on them. They're nutritious, great energy boosting, Mm -hmm. or have them in your Persian trail mix with, you know, a little bit pop of dried fruit. Mm -hmm. And we really hope that we've given you some ideas and inspiration to, you know, elevate your everyday home dishes and desserts. So do we have an Ask the Beats today, Vita June? Yes, this Ask the Beats actually comes from Steve in Marin. And Steve asks us, what are your top three things to get at a Persian market? And today's Persian markets, it's either in person or you can get your online Persian market as well for people who don't have a real brick and mortar Persian market and close by, but totally. What are three things that you get from a Persian market, Bitaja? You're lucky enough that you have a bunch of Persian markets near you, so you probably have specific things for specific markets too. I am blessed with an abundance of Persian markets, both in Northern California Bay Area and in Orange County. So yeah, when I go in, if I'm myself there, I'm gonna get jam. Because mm-hmm. I love the variety of jams. Mm-hmm. Persian jams, Turkish jams, Greek jams. I'll probably get cherry. I'll probably look for rose and I might even get be, mm-hmm. which is quince. So definitely Persian jam. Then I will look for dur and we like oh, the right. mint dur and that's the kind of carbonated yogurty salty Persian drink. Mm-hmm. And up here, I'll probably get like a little six pack of them. If I was down south, I might get a like a quart or a liter. They actually oh, sell them that fun. way. But yeah, we drink a lot of du. It's really good. And then the other thing is that our markets usually have ready made food. I can't resist but get some kebab or a choresh. Mm-hmm. So that's what I usually go home with. Yeah, I'm jealous of those. Oh, you don't have as many near you. I'm I know. sorry. Yeah, it's okay. You know, I'm actually envious of like when you talk about when you guys go to the Persian market and get like ashirishte or hadim ready to go. I'm like, oh my God, that sounds so fun. And also sounds super easy too. It's like, okay, I just got some of this for dinner. Dinner's ready. Mm-hmm. And that's awesome. And definitely support those markets if you have them near you. That's so great. If I was going to the Persian market, the three things that I would have on my list is I would also get jam. I would get morabai albalu like the albalu is a sour cherry is actually kind of hard to come by so i would definitely get a little jar of moraboy albalu i would get bread and i would get a big fat barbari they're like two three feet long sheets of bread that are freshly baked and i love that so i would definitely get some persian bread and then my third thing is i would get limu amani because that's a hard thing to get limu amani are these dried limes actually originating from Oman, which is an area right outside of Iran. But I would get limu amani and use those for making different stews, different khoresh, khoresh de gaymeh, khoresh de sabzi. And also they have like a dried ground version too that I love adding to like dressings and also to some roasted vegetables and things like that too for different executions. I like to use that. I also love using limu amani and khoresh de karafs, the celery stew too. So if I had to narrow my list of just three items, those would be my three things. And I definitely wish there were more markets around here that did have those uh, ingredients. I need to take you. I almost said limu amani. It's so funny. Our list was almost the That's same. That's so funny. So I need to take you and we will go together. Yeah. Stock up. Yes. I hope that everyone got a little bit of inspiration to use piste, Persian pistachios, and serve them on your table, on their own, with ajit, or also in a variety of different sweet or savory dishes. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Every Wednesday, we come out with a fun and exciting topic to share with you. So please follow us on social media, on Instagram, and subscribe to our podcast. And we appreciate you being part of our podcast journey. Thanks, Pizza June. Until next time. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Modern Persian Food Podcast with Bita and Bita. Thanks for spending time with us. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling a friend or giving us a good rating. You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com or on Instagram for the recipes and information we talked about today. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time.